Hello. I believe I'm on day six of this new and crazy eating all meat diet. I've right it's still an elimination diet because I've reduced down what I'm eating, and then hopefully I can introduce things back in to essentially test them and see how I react to them. But I've had to expand my meat eating to basically everything just to be able to eat stuff because whoo, it's like it's it's kind of hard to just eat that. I haven't been able to eat organ meats and bone broth. They're, they're just so bad. But I've been doing more research on it and there are people that have had a lot of success without eating organ meats and bone broth. Uh, so bone broth even upsets some people. Super interesting. There's well there's a bunch of research on it but I think the most interesting one is Charlene Anderson. Her and her husband have been 19, 20 years in uh, to eating just ribeye steak and drinking water for 20 years and like amazing health cured a bunch of her stuff uh, she had she had a bunch of health issues so extremely interesting and but there's a bunch more too uh, so it seems like the most sensitive people have to restrict it down even more and more and she had a stack of notebooks where for like a couple of years they experimented with different diets and eating different things and that's just what they ended up with so extremely interesting and she actually had to stop working out because her muscles were growing too much and she didn't want to look too much too masculine she didn't want her muscles to get too big super interesting story uh, so I you know ideally ideally with a elimination diet I would reduce it down to as little as I can, as few things as I can, and then add things in to see how they go. But it's it's that's difficult to dive into, like just eating a few things. So I haven't fully been able to do that, but I've, I've kept it fully on just meat. So I'm going to keep working on that. Uh, I have I'm feeling a little bit better, but overall just exhausted. Uh, so, but not not like a bad health exhausted, just kind of exhausted. And so this week, which this is this is crazy and bad, uh, I've slept through my first class or first two classes a couple of times. Uh, I'm just sleeping right through my alarm, which is insane. Like I don't even think it's gonna help to crank up the alarm. It's you know that's not the the issue. I'm just like sleeping like a rock, and having a hard time waking up. Obviously, so that's not good at all which is interesting and I actually they put me on notice the, the company that I work for one of the companies that I teach for put me on notice and not for that which is really weird because that would make a lot of sense and you know I've been talking to them about that and whatnot but because of my background like this is my background and when I when I teach it's it's smaller right so the background is probably like like that or something it narrows it in a little bit so base I mean you have mostly my head and then white and then when I move my head I can sometimes I point out my painting my the single painting to students and then students usually I haven't had anyone not like it they usually really like it some students really like painting and that type of stuff and we connect well with it but they want you to have like a bunch of kids like maps and letters and words and pictures of weird little animals so I'm gonna see if I can keep it the same because this it works so good like it doesn't distract kids at all and then I can point this out and then we we connect well especially if they're into painting it ends up being a cool subject because especially at first a lot of kids we go through like what do you like to do what now you ask me what I like to do that type of thing uh, so it works out good for that and it, you know obviously I show them books that I read so <laughs> which I have tons of I always have tons of books around me so that's that's easy now you know, maybe I should throw some books up on the wall I don't know if they would like that or not uh, anyways, uh, so I've been working on the blog and changing it all around. N not all around. It's basically the same, but I've been adding in stuff like people can comment on my blog now. You know, I should have probably added that a long time ago so I could have discussions with people, but I did now. I added a contact form. I added two different trackers so I can track more, which I found out something rather depressing, but I don't know how depressed to be about it is that the tracker that I was using is apparently some can be considered somewhat inaccurate and on the high side meaning I have significantly less views than it's actually tracking 
because it tracks all the internet crawlers. So when Google crawls my page, or when Bing crawls my page, or any of the other feeds crawl my page automatically just to register it in their system, then it's registering that as a page view. So and those really aren't there. There's no one looking at my page. It's just a machine crawling through the page to track it and to put it into things like Google and whatnot. So that is super unfortunate. I wish I would have known that and done one of these other tracking things earlier because my views are probably significantly less than I have been tracking or thinking. So that, well, that sucks. That's like, that's horrible. Uh, but I did, I wrote another article yesterday because I've, you know, I've been feeling a little bit better health-wise, feeling better, but more tired. So, you know, I've been sleeping more because I started working less in the evenings, but then I also switched over to this crazy diet at the same time, which my body has to adjust to, and I think I'm on day six or right in there somewhere. Uh, so that's, that's somewhat, well, it's interesting. It's interesting to say the least. Let's see. I don't think I had anything else. That's mostly it, right? The the diet, exhaustion, work. Oh, I got an email for my credit score today. It's at like 620, which is insane. You know, a couple of years before the African adventure, it was like 740. Uh, and I haven't missed a payment or been late on a payment yet. Uh, and they just keep dropping it. So the only way I could increase is the pick up a credit card go into more debt which is really weird and I'm obviously not going to do that but, I mean that system kind of makes no sense and yeah I don't know what to do about those finances exactly I mean the thing is now I've had to cut basically I've had to cut my working hours in half and I feel much better on half of those working hours I mean my body and mind are basically just falling apart on the other schedule so it puts me in a puts me in a weird predicament where I have to choose between health and money, and how do you, how do you choose? You can't you can't choose. Uh, so I have to think of something else there and come up with some some other solution. Uh, my two stories, my two short stories, are entered into a uh, well to be looked at about a publishing thing. There's these books that I saw at Barnes and Noble. And they're done by a really cool publisher, Flame Tree Publishing. So I sent them. The, those two short stories that I have that I like and they I technically missed the deadline by like a couple of days because I had never heard of the publishing house before that and they're making two more anthologies this this year one of them's like dark and one of them science fiction so it's perfect for my two short stories they said she said they have tons and tons and tons of entries so that means it's unlikely that I get picked for one but because they have tons and tons and tons of entries then she said she was willing to put them in there even though they were a few days late because you know they need time to get to them anyways so kind of worked out good because it got me into at least being looked at and kind of bad because you know the odds that I get chosen for something like that are pretty small but still interesting interesting and I joined VK.com which is kind of like Russia's Facebook it's actually I think it, it works better than Facebook but like tons of countries have illegalized it and the Russian government actually forced the founder out and they might have imprisoned him or they're like hunting him down or something uh, for no reason in particular other than he just you know they don't they don't like freedom in uh, in Russia too much, so especially freedom of information. So, which right we use that phrase oddly in the United States, but yeah, and so it's kind of like highly government controlled and overseen, but they still let you do a ton of stuff on it. So, really weird and interesting, and very nice format. So I've been getting a lot more views from Russia. And uh, met a guy that's an author from Russia that's very interesting. He writes his books in English, so that's really cool and, yeah, and interesting. And then one of my students, the one I was studying poetry with, and we were we went through uh, The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost, and we're going through The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, but her teacher, one of her teachers at school, suggested that she should write a story. And she read Cinderella 
we assume in Chinese, when she was like four. She really liked it, so she wants to make a Cinderella story. And it's it's so cool because she's been thinking about it for like a month already. And so we switched over to focusing on writing. And I'll probably write an article on my blog about it, maybe, maybe today if I don't sleep most of the day. And called Kinderello. And then Kinderello, is a, I helped her come, came up with the name. She was just calling him Cinderella before. But he's a boy that like plays in a water polo tournament and loses a shoe it's it's really unique and then he has two step brothers right? and it's it's cool it's super interesting I, I was impressed with the overall outline of the story it's it's kind of hilarious it's like a parody i mean it's a yeah it's 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 a pretty funny parody of Cinderella, so that will be interesting to go over and write. We only work together an hour a week, you know, so it'll it'll take some some time, but still pretty interesting. Anyways, now I believe that's it. Ah, one more thing. I talked with one of my Chinese students about school because she's doing her exams over the next couple of months to get into high school because she said probably about half of people go to high school in China and the other half go do a little bit of trade school type stuff or just go right into the workforce and then she said you know become cooks or nurses those are trade school jobs and you don't go to high school for those so she was very surprised that everyone in the United States goes to high school and and that you go by your area in China you don't go by your area you do these exams and the higher you score the better school you can go to which I've noticed in some students and I've talked to some of them about that a little bit and well it's interesting it's interesting it's kind of like the old Soviet system I'm not sure if Russia still runs it like that or not but they kind of set you down a track and their basic opinion is like not everyone needs to know geography and history and math like if you're gonna be a cook at a fast food joint you you really don't need to know that stuff so just you know go out there and start working and then other people they really set on like an academic course but it's super competitive obviously you have a 50 percent cut rate on just getting in and then after that there's right there's more cuts so unique system that was interesting to talk about today all right now i'm done until next time jeff out